Hey you guys, it's Honey, if you've ever heard about or watched before. As far as I'm aware, the entire community uses teleporting entities for recasting. The reasons why this is bad is because one, it's slow, it takes a while for them to teleport because Minecraft automatically smooths out the teleportations, and two, if you teleport it across the corner of a block, you're gonna miss that block. And seeing as I'm currently recreating Portal in Minecraft for my next video, I don't want it to skip that corner of the block. I want to be able to do that and for it to build a portal here. So I wanted to come up with a new method of raycasting that didn't do that. So I've created arrow raycasting. As far as I'm aware, this hasn't been done before. I spent a little bit looking online and I was unable to find anything on the concept of arrow raycasting, but I'm probably wrong. Someone's probably done it before and I would love to hear about it. But in case no one else has done it before, I figured I should probably bring it to the attention of the community. So we're making this video. First of all, let's take a look at why arrow raycasting is just better. For one, when you do a raycast at the edge of a block, it will almost always get that block. Whereas in normal circumstances with teleporting an armor stand, you would not be getting that block, or at least you would be getting that block on a rare occasion. Another reason why arrow raycasting is better is because it's faster. If I'm over here and I want to raycast over to there, this would take way too long with teleporting an entity. However, by using an arrow with a decently high velocity, we're able to do it much quicker. I'm going to switch over to the character on a stick, and as, as I do, I'm going to right click and try and right click as soon as I switch over, so you get an idea of, uh, of how long it takes. Uh, three, two, one. Now, there you go. That long for how many blocks? A decent amount. And so that is one faster than raycasting by teleporting an entity, and also more accurate. And that's why I think that this is just better than teleporting an entity. There is one downside to this that I know of, which is that if I want to make the arrow invisible, I need to use a texture pack so that the arrow isn't visible and to remove the sound. And so if we disable all of that and we look at the actual raycast, you can see the arrows and you can hear the arrows hitting, but uh, that's, that's really it. That is the one downside to this method as far as I'm aware. So let's talk about what makes it work. So these two command chains here are pretty much the exact same. It's just the difference between a blue portal and an orange portal. It's all been done before, it's nothing new, and I found it all on the Minecraft commands wiki. I'll leave a link to where I found that in the description. So after we've done this, you'd expect it to be easy, but there is still one issue. When we fire this and we look at where it is on the ground, you'd expect that if we were to execute a command at the arrow and we were to execute our uh, set block stone you'll find that it is indeed not inside the block but on top of it so we're unable to do that to figure out what this block is so we need to continue down the trajectory so you'd expect that we could just do this and look and go one in front of where it's looking but when we do that you'll find that it does this and this is because minecraft is a terrible game. It's so bad because when we look at where the arrow is actually looking, it's looking nowhere near where we want it to look. It's looking off, off here. And when we look at where the arrows are looking, it feels almost like they're looking in a completely random direction, but that is not actually the case. If we were to take this angle here and multiply that by negative one, you would find that we would end up looking over this way. And it's the same with the, uh, with the Y rotation. So what we, need, what we needed to do is take the direction that it's looking, save it to a scoreboard, multiply that by negative one, and then move that back into the arrow. And by doing all of that, we'd be able to take this arrow and make it look negative one, negative one, which is where it should be facing. And that's what this next command chain does. This first command block here takes the arrow that has landed in the ground, detects when it lands in the ground, and gives it the tag casting. The reason I've given it this tag is so that when we delete it later on, it doesn't delete other raycasting arrows that are currently in the air. This next command block takes the Y rotation of the arrow and saves it into a scoreboard under the arrow. Then this command block here takes that score and multiplies it by negative one. And then once the Y is done, you repeat that for X, and then you have the X and Y that you needed to be looking saved in a scoreboard. After that goes through and we have the values that we want it to be looking at saved in a scoreboard, we run this command line. What this first command does is takes the value we have saved in the scoreboard for the X rotation for the arrow and applies that to the arrow. The second command block then does it for the Y. And after that, all we need to do is detect the block just in front of it 
because now the arrow is facing the right direction, and then we kill the arrow after our command is done. If we disable this command block, we can see that when the arrow hits the ground, it'll then flip around so that the direction that it's facing is the direction that it was previously traveling in. If anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. If you want me to give you the commands, I'd be happy to give them to you. But yeah, with all of that being said, thanks for watching and have a great day.